A charged infinite sheet with a circular hole. Consider an infinite flat sheet with positive charge density sigma in which a circular hole of radius r has been cut out. The sheet lies in the xy plane with the origin at the center of the hole. The sheet is parallel to the ground so that the positive z-axis describes the upward direction. If a particle of mass m and negative charge minus q sits at rest at the center of the hole and is released, the particle constrained to the z-axis begins to fall. As it drops farther beneath the sheet, the upward electric force increases. For a sufficiently low value of m, the upward electrical attraction eventually exceeds the particle's weight and the particle will slow, come to a stop and then rise back to its original position. This sequence of events will repeat indefinitely. Part A. What is the electric field at a depth delta beneath the origin along the negative z-axis? Part B. What is the maximum mass m max that would prevent the particle from falling indefinitely? Okay, so uh, we have an infinite flat sheet. We have a particle with mass m that is uh, falling down. And now we want to know the electric field due to this configuration, this uh, infinite flat sheet with uh, surface charge density sigma, and that has a hole in it. It has an annulus uh, with radius capital R. So we want to know the electric field at this point. Now, we already know the electric field due to an infinite flat sheet. So electric field uh, for an infinite flat sheet we have calculated before and we have used two different methods. So let's go back to the problem where we calculated it. Um, you can see here we used Gauss law. Uh, closed surface integral e dot dA is q in over epsilon zero. The charge enclosed is uh, surface charge density multiplied by pi r square for the cylinder divided by epsilon zero is electric field dot product with the uh, area vector which gives us two e a so uh, two e pi r square and that gives us an electric field sigma over to epsilon zero. We also used uh, the electric field due to a uniformly charged disk here. And for the uniformly charged disk, we have found uh, that the electric field components uh, other than the x component will cancel out due to symmetry and uh, looking at the electric field due to a charge element sigma r dr d theta uh, the electric field due to this charge element is k d q over uh, d square uh, and an x component we need to multiply with cosine phi that gives us k d q over d square x over d and the, that basically tells us because d square is x square plus r square uh, and d is square root of x squared plus r squared, we have to integrate this quantity. And when we do that, we reach this conclusion. Electric field is sigma x over 2 epsilon 0, 1 over x minus 1 over square root of x squared plus r squared. Then we looked at the infinite flat sheet limit where r is much greater than x. Okay, so in this problem, we need to refer to both of these electric field components. So first we have the electric field due to an infinite flat sheet, which is uh, sigma over 2 epsilon 0 uh, magnitude wise. And on the z-axis uh, down here, it will be in uh, minus k hat direction when this point is chosen below the uh, infinite flat sheet. And then we have the electric field due to a charged, uniformly charged disk, uniformly charged disk. Uh, this electric field is uh, basically sigma z 
divided by 2 epsilon 0 it is 1 over z minus 1 over square root of z square plus capital R square and below the uh, disk here it's going to point in uh, also a minus k hat direction okay so what we have to do to find the electric field of this configuration is subtract the electric field that would be due to this disk from this infinitely flat sheet so the electric field at point p is the electric field uh, due to the infinite flat sheet which is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 and minus sigma z over 2 epsilon 0 because it's a hole, it's not a disk, 1 over z minus 1 over z square plus r square square root. And this electric field, uh, the total electric field here, points in minus k hat direction. Okay. Now, uh, when we open this up, this is going to become sigma over 2 epsilon 0 minus sigma over 2 epsilon 0 plus uh, sigma z over 2 epsilon 0 z square plus r square square root and this whole thing is in minus k hat direction and you can see that the first two terms will cancel out here and I will be left with one answer and note that uh, we're, we're, we're asked to find this electric field uh, at a depth delta beneath the origin along the negative z-axis so we're going to say uh, z is equal to delta then our answer for the electric field will become electric field at point p is sigma delta over 2 epsilon 0 delta square plus capital R square square root in minus k hat direction. So this will be the electric field uh, below the hole a distance delta from the origin. In part B, we want to find the maximum mass that would prevent the particle from falling indefinitely. Now, as for this particle, we have a free body diagram. Uh, the particle has negative charge, therefore the force it feels is upward. So it's uh, basically, uh, it's charge multiplied by electric field, it's pointing upward. Uh, it's attracted towards the uh, flat sheet with, uh, with the hole in it and its weight is pointing down. So uh, when we reach the maximum mass for m equals, when we have a maximum mass here, uh, this weight mg will be balancing the uh, upward electrical force q times e uh, therefore, we will have the equilibrium condition. So, m max 
is going to be equal to QE divided by G. Now, for delta equals delta max, that is much greater than capital R, you can replace square root of delta square plus R square with uh, delta. Uh, so we will have M max equals um, Q sigma delta, Q sigma delta, uh, divided by 2 epsilon 0, 2 epsilon 0, and then we have this factor g here, 2 epsilon 0 g, delta square plus r square, square root. So this is uh, what we would find for m max. But if uh, we have delta equals delta max, that's much greater than uh, r, then this would turn into m max equals uh, q sigma delta max divided by 2 epsilon 0 g delta max because uh, r square will be neglected and we will have square root of delta max square so these would cancel and we would find that the maximum uh, mass we have here will be q sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 g. Okay. All right, so uh, we want to find the electric field due to this infinite flat sheet with the circular hole in it. We have to recall the electric field due to the infinite flat sheet, sigma over 2 epsilon 0, and in the minus z axis minus z directions minus k hat and electric field due to the uniformly charged disk is sigma z over 2 epsilon 0 1 over z minus 1 over square root of z square plus r square the answer we have found in one of the previous problems that i showed at the beginning and this is also in minus k hat direction now this part is subtracted from the infinite flat sheet so we are left with a hole here so we have to subtract this quantity and we find that the answer is sigma z over 2 epsilon 0 square root of z square plus r square in minus k hat direction. So when z is equal to delta, we reach this answer. Now, in part b, you want to find the maximum mass that would prevent a particle from falling indefinitely. <coughs> if the particle is falling a long distance, delta uh, equals delta max, that's much greater than uh, r, uh, we can replace this square root of delta square plus r square with delta max and we can find the maximum mass we can have uh, to prevent it for, from falling indefinitely. It has to be balancing this electrical uh, force. Um, so if I have a mass that's greater than this, it won't be balanced and the weight will win and it will continue falling. So this is when the equilibrium condition is satisfied. And remember, if you have an object that is moving with constant speed uh, downward, when the forces are balanced, it's going to continue falling with that uh, constant speed. So when the mass uh, is basically uh, going to be slightly less than this maximum mass, the uh, electrical force will win and it will be re-attracted towards the infinite flat sheet with the hole in it. So we want to find this critical mass value for which we will establish equilibrium and it will fall uh, just, it will just stop falling, uh, it will just prevent it from falling indefinitely. That means we have a, a very large delta value, uh, delta max, much greater than R. So uh, the equilibrium condition is QE is equal to uh, mg. So we have an electrical force here, uh, Q times E. The charge is negative. That's, that's why it's going to be uh, pointing upward. Uh, and 
uh, if we substitute for the electric field, uh, the answer we found in part A, uh, Q sigma delta over 2 epsilon 0 square root of delta square plus R square is the electrical force divided by G gives us a max for delta equals delta max. Uh, the, we have this delta max is cancelling because it's much greater than R here. We obtain Q sigma over 2 epsilon 0 G for the critical value of mass. If the mass is slightly less than this, then it, it won't uh, fall indefinitely. It will uh, go back to the original uh, position. If the uh, mass is greater than this maximum mass, weight will win and it will keep falling indefinitely.